We all know that a low thyroid condition can cause weight gain and a host of other problems. But did you know that yeast overgrowth can significantly impact your ability to lose weight? I'm here with Dr. Don Ellsworth to discuss how a yeast-free eating program can help you shed those unwanted pounds and regain your health. The Don, fungus among us. Yeah, the fungus among us. Tell us about the fungus among us. Well, first let's talk about what yeast is. Okay. Yeast is a single-celled organism which is in the fungi family, so it's fungal. Okay. And Things like molds are all in that family as well. And we all know how common those are. We've all seen things growing in our, in our refrigerator that doesn't belong there. We've all seen things in the shower that we have to get rid of. And of course, if our house ever has water damage, we're very concerned about mold. Right. We all know that the reason we don't want it in our house is it doesn't go away on its own. Same thing happens to our body. When it ever grows, it's there. When yeast overgrows. When candida, which is the most common strain, overgrows in our GI tract, it sticks onto the sides. If we're eating great and we don't have any issues of, uh, we're, we're not eating any sugar, so we're not feeding it, and we're taking care of ourselves, we're working out, the problem is, is that it's just in its dormant mode. It's just waiting for a better day. First time you take anything with sugar in it, a piece of bread that breaks down to sugar. Donuts. Take another round of antibiotics, take some birth control pills, whoosh, it's gonna grow again. And yeast causes problems in, in several respects. It makes you crave simple carbohydrates. So if you start feeding more yeast, you're gonna get mo more yeast, and your immune system tends to become weakened when you have yeast overgrowth. You're more prone to infections. So guess what? More antibiotics. Right. And you've got this cycle going on where you're taking antibiotics, you're feeling worse and worse, and you're finding it harder and harder to control your weight. So getting rid of yeast is important to set you up for the ability to lose weight. What are the kind of problems will, besides causing you to gain weight because you're eating too many carbs and too many calories, what kind of problems, other problems, will, will the yeast overgrowth give you in your, in, your, in your body? It is so many that many people, when they hear the number of issues that can occur from yeast overgrowth, think there's no way it could be that many issues that come from it. What's the most common? Reflux, heartburn, skin conditions, eczema, psoriasis, having some issues, uh, memory issues, trouble remembering things, depressed moods, joint pain, um, having some problems. One of the ways I first learned about yeast is when my wife actually took some antibiotics after some sinus infections, and she just had this really pale look to her, uh, felt really tired, and chronic fatigue can be the main symptom of yeast overgrowth which again, a lot of people think low thyroid when they think of chronic sure. fatigue. But as you know, we're big on folks coming in, doing the yeast program, because we have found the two usually go together. Right. If you've got a depressed immune system from low thyroid, and you've lived in the US where we use a lot of antibiotics, chances of having yeast overgrowth are high. And if you don't get the GI tract healthy, you're gonna have a hard time feeling better. So we find that it's critical to get rid of yeast in order to promote optimal health. So how do you get rid of yeast? Well, first you stop feeding it, cutting out the sugars and the starches. And that's sometimes a tough move for folks. But what you find is when you get away from eating sugar and starchy foods, you stop craving them. It's, it's kind of like a detox. And you know, if you've ever talked to somebody who used to drink too much or smoke, you know, at first it's tough, you crave it. But what you find is, is before you know it, you're not thinking about it all the time. And what you want to remember is that you can break that addiction. You know, it's interesting that when, if you feed in mice some sugary water and you put some real food next to them, you know what they're going to go for? The sugar water. In fact, they'll starve themselves to death going for the sugar water. We're sort of like those mice. We've been trained by a food industry to go for the sugary foods. And what happens when you eat sugary food is it also kicks up your insulin. Mm -hmm. That makes you hungry. It also makes you store things. So the other aspect like that. that goes along with the whole problem of eating simple sugars, simple carbohydrates, and we're talking things like sugar itself, fructose, high fructose corn syrup that's added to sodas. We're talking bread, pasta, pizza, cereal, cakes, cookies, crackers. We're talking milk. A lot of people forget about milk. And to a lesser degree, potato and rice. Those all will increase insulin, which makes you hungry, so you eat more. And insulin is also the storage hormone. It makes you store everything right where you don't want it. So if you've got an abdominal girth issue, chances are you have an insulin issue. And insulin is usually related to simple carbohydrates. 
And if you have an insulin issue, that's because you're taking too many simple carbs. You're taking too many simple carbs because you may have yeast in your system causing you to crave carbs. It sends, it sends out chemical messengers telling the body, we, we need that sugar. It loves the sugar. And if it doesn't get the sugar, the yeast then produces toxins that make you feel bad. Exactly. So you cut out the sugars. The yeast retreat to the spore mode. Now you can start getting rid of it. You take some antifungals. We use nystatin and to a lesser degree fluconazole and lots of the good bacteria, the probiotics, so that you're removing the bad guys. What do you mean by probiotics? Well, we naturally have good bacteria within okay. us. You know, when we often think bacteria bad and we want to get rid of them, the reality is we can't live without the good bacteria in our GI tract. In fact, we have about two pounds worth of these good bacteria when we're healthy. Unfortunately, we often have too little, and we not only have too little of the good bacteria, we have too much yeast. Okay. So the whole goal is to change that order, get the yeast out of the system, put in the good, and once the good is established, the, you have that good flora, those good bacteria, Later on down the road, if you eat some pie, you enjoy something for your birthday, the yeast can't grow because all that good bacteria is there to act as a defense. Gotcha. So if a person goes on a yeast-free eating program, is it uncommon for them to lose weight? They frequently will find that their weight is down, their energy is up. Symptoms related to the yeast overgrowth can resolve in a dramatic fashion in some folks. For example, that heartburn that you may have lived with for years may be gone. Your skin conditions may be clearing up. Your chronic fatigue may be resolving. And we find that if you don't do the yeast cleanse and just try to take hormones, you don't get the same result because the GI tract is a really central part of our body, which by the way is one of the key differences between doctors who really think about the way the body works and the conventional medical paradigm, which more just puts labels on things is we think about the way the body works and we understand the GI tract is not just a tube for absorbing nutrients, it affects the rest of the body. We know it affects the brain greatly. So you have to have a healthy GI tract if you wanna be able to think clearly. Well, thanks so much for sharing with us your insight on yeast. And I think this is something that our uh, listening audience and viewing audience today is gonna to need to think about, especially after coming out of the holiday season where you know we're overloaded with all those sweet cookies and cakes and candies. So here's a good time of year to get yourself on a good program and a yeast free eating program can help you get your health back and may even help you lose weight. So thanks for joining us, Dr. My Hansel. pleasure. Now that you've learned about yeast free eating programs, how about a yeast free recipe just for you? When we come back, our registered dietitian, Shelly Johnson, will join us. You won't want to miss this.